Wally. All right, so gonna do a little review on the M62 TLB. TLB stands for tractor loader backhoe. Um, unlike, uh, hey Wally, unlike uh, most residential tractors Kubota puts out, um, this M62 has, well, 63 horse, maybe 62, 63. Um, but as, you, as you're looking here, it's just like a conventional backhoe, whereas it utilizes the tractor seat as the main seat just flips around so this isn't technically like a, a farm implement where you have the, the back on the back and it's 14 feet um, that's uh, four more feet than I was used to because we used to have the John Deere 110 backhoe that was a 43 horse and again I love my John Deere 110 but I like this more there's pros and cons uh, we're gonna go through a list of all the pros and just familiarize yourself with some of the uh, features on the Kubota M62 and Messick's equipment did a pretty darn good view uh, review on the M62 and I remember looking at that I, I must have watched that thing a hundred times before I bought this and it was I found to be one of the most important but I think what I want to offer with this review today is some of the uh, I've had 164 hours in the seat and I've done everything from flail mowing the 20 acres down below us um, a lot of back, uh, backhoe work um, I've got a grapple bucket on the front I've used a lot for, spread a lot of rock, and, and of course you can take this unit off and put a three-point on just like a regular tractor. Um, takes about 15 minutes, uh, 10 minutes if you're real fast, and the hoe comes off super easy. Um, takes a little more time to put on, you have to pin on the uh, three-point just like any other three-point. Um, so with this unit, let's see, we've got... Uh, the, uh, the back goes seat, and what I like about this, one little lever here on the uh, corner, thing flips around, now you can operate the, uh, the excavating boom on the back, and I'm going to flip it back anyhow, so just a flash you pull up, it's usually I'm not at this funny angle, but anyway, there you go, um, really like metal fenders, because it has a big guy trying to pull my self up onto a unit. Um, the other tractor, the John Deere, had plastic fenders, and eventually I broke out the the uh, bolt pattern where the bolt the bolts onto the frame of the tractor. That's never gonna happen with this unit. It's super strong. I really like the power, the lift capacity. It lifts nearly uh, two ton, and we know this because if you look up the hill here, we've got those concrete blocks. I'm just storing them up there. Those are 3,800 pounds a piece. You know, usually I've got the, uh, this is the 36 inch muck bucket, or dirt bucket, or finished bucket, or smooth bucket. There's a lot of, quite a few different names for it. That's probably the most satisfying bucket to use because it leaves obviously such a nice finish and you can really tell uh, when you're excavating what your grade is. Um, the 14 feet is impressive. I love the extra reach. One thing I like, another thing I like about this is the, uh, I mean, I call it the advanced throttle on demand. I think it's called stall guard, but that's where when you press the uh, transmission pedal and you're going forward, the uh, the RPMs pick up. So it, it's kind of like on demand. That way you don't bog down if you're pushing into a gravel pile. It'll give you the horsepower you need. However, I'm doing a lot of heavy stuff, I, I will throttle up. But the advantage to that is it's uh, fuel savings. And uh, I don't know, I just really like that. It's got a tilt steering wheel. And I'm not going to get into all the... Uh, options on the digital dash dashboard, but I really like the location of the dashboard. It's obviously it's smart to have it on the fender because if you're working in reverse or forward, there you have it. You can reach your cup holder uh, from either position. Um, I do like the design better on the John Deere um, 
the John Deere has a nicer, more ergonomically uh, comfortable position for your, uh, they have like a little fender spot where you can put your hand on it, but this is okay. I've got my uh, rocker switch here for running a grapple or whatever auxiliary hydraulics that are on the boom, or that's not a boom, but that's a loader. Um, and as you notice, there's no, uh, there's no dashboard where there would normally be a dashboard. And as previously explained, that's because it's right here. And uh, look at that light up. It's like a little Christmas tree. It's got a lot of things to track your hours. I'm not even getting into all the details, but um, I've really enjoyed running this unit. And uh, I think I already said that. Um, another good thing about the uh, underneath here is all the plating and guarding that they've done. A problem that I ran into in past with other machines are sometimes you have hard lines, you have soft lines, so they get, they get a stick jammed in them, you'll break a hydraulic line, and that's pretty much a bad day. It's a big interruption in your work day when you, you scrape something on a hydraulic line, and, but they've done an excellent job, so kudos to Kubota for really plating the bottom of this unit. Uh, they've been very thoughtful in that. It's a very heavy duty loader. Um, the loader is not removable because it's a permanent fixture, which also the advantage to that is it's stronger. You can build it with better engineering. I got the thing where it's automated, so you don't have to get out and pull these latches for the uh, changing buckets. That's awfully handy. But then I've kind of negated that whole situation because I've added this tilt plate, which is pretty dang cool. So I can take a bucket and turn it side to side, which is great when you're doing excavating and you want to start a grade and well the tractor's on a crooked grade and your bucket's crooked well you correct your bucket then you drive into it and you can uh, cut a nice line and now you're looking at this thinking what is going on here i've got my pallet forks on here uh, added these hooks um, three of them one big one comes in handy when you're craning something or picking something up or i kind of accidentally found that hey, this is a great option for moving the forks because after all, right now, we're actually going to go up to that little landing up there and do some block lifting. And you can see the difference between when we're lifting up there, uh, how much pow more power there is to lift when you're just using the forks as compared to this big heavy bucket. Again, those blocks up there are at the peak of how much this thing can lift. So you get this big heavy bucket off of there, it makes it a lot easier. Um, this is an 84 inch bucket. I thought when I was going to buy the machine that I, I need to get a big fluff bucket or something bigger for light material. I really don't need to. The 84 is huge and well built. Um, and again, from this side, you can see things are pretty well protected. Now, the oil filter does stick out a little bit. They have the diesel filter up here kind of stashed away. And I appreciate that. That's a little more protected than some of the other units I've seen. Um, look at all the lugs on this thing. It's a heavy duty. I got the R4 tires. Obviously, it's, it's four wheel drive. That's pretty well a common thing. Even comes with a little plastic uh, toolbox. I think I might put an ammo box on there eventually to have a little more depth. And, uh, and then it's got all the nice cab lights over the top, headlights front and back. Um, and I think that's it for all the, the positive things. And now to be negative, the biggest offender. The biggest fender, come over and take a peek at this, is the muffler. The muffler is a place where it blows straight in front of you. Anybody that's run machinery will figure out real quick. Well, that's terrible, because if you're in a dusty environment, it's literally like somebody's out here with a backpack blower, blowing all the dirt up into the air. And when I was mowing this lower field, it was also a bummer, because any of the loose grass in the field would get whipped up into the air and get stuck in the radiator screens and I have to clean the screens out about every 20 minutes when I'm out mowing if it's very dry uh, and there's a lot of loose grass that's cut on the field. So I am gonna probably try to elbow this over and at least get it to blow to one side would be an improvement. Um, another thing that I don't like at all is the location of this e-brake. So if you can see just how close this little seat belt uh, attachment bolt is to the I mean it'll tear your fingernails off how do you even grab that it's actually literally bumps it and so and then secondly the other thing that's also bad about that is when you have this pulled up like that and you want to go turn the seat 
guess what? High centers on it and you can't do it. Well, you think, well, when would that be a problem? Well, I live on a hill and if I wanna park the tractor, put the e-brake on, swivel the seat around and get these outriggers down, um, well, I can't. So I gotta try to jam the bucket down. I, I just don't, I think there's a better place and a better location for this e-brake. Um, but, you know, and then the other thing is um, the dipper. So this main cylinder here that picks up the main mass is pretty dang slow. The side uh, shift on the boom is super fast, um, but this just seems rather slow. Um, I just, it's very powerful, so maybe that's the, the trade-off, but I would think if I was a commercial guy doing a lot of excavating, I'd think that might be frustrating because um, when you run a lot of little minis, they have a pretty good movement, pretty quick. Last and finally is the, the pedal. And this is just me being biased. They're completely functional and great if you want to get a shot of that foot pedal. I, I just don't like the Kubota rocker pedal. Well, and I knew that when I bought the machine. But uh, John Deere has a twin pedal system where you can just have your heel on the floor of the platform and just pivot left or right, forward, reverse. This situation is a little difficult. When you're a big guy like me, I'm kind of just jammed in here. However, I do like the space and entry into this platform is very, very big guy uh, friendly. Um, I am glad, however, that they added this little peg on the right. Because a lot of times I'm just mowing, you have your heel here and you're just on the peg. And I'm not up here. I've got bad knees, bad ankles. This situation ain't really great for me. I think if they had this pedal just in about three inches, I could be more straightforward and not canter off to the right and my knee hitting the loader handle. So that's my opinion, whatever it's worth. Again, none of these things would stop me from buying the tractor again, but they're just some of those simple design things. This tractor has so much power and it's so heavy. It's 10 or 12,000 pounds. I should know the weight of it. I did add the, uh, the juice and the tires to give more ballast for lifting with the loader, and that has helped. But I totally smashed and collapsed this uh, this little step here like a like a lawn chair, and it was flat, like just collapsed flat. I hit a stump, and when I hit it, I didn't even know I hit it. So, and I'm pretty observant, but maybe not all the time. So I had to hook a chain, and I threw it under the tire, and I backed up and I pulled it back out. So a little redneck fix. It's good enough for me for now. But the bummer part is this step. It's integrated with the battery box. Nice location for the battery box. But um, but it has to be welded back on. You can't buy a replacement step because it's literally fastened to the frame. So that's a bummer. Someday if I get real vain about it, maybe I'll fix it. But it's pretty strong. It still works. It's a step. I've, uh, I've customized my step. Uh, when you have a 36 inch digging bucket on and it's loaded up with a lot of stuff and maybe you're on a slight hillside or a slope, it can get a little squirrely. I've had a few minor scares that, you know, it was fixable by just dropping the boom down. Uh, I would definitely take notice of that. Don't go swinging your, uh, your full digging bucket super fast or it's gonna pull you down with it. One thing that's nice to be able to do is when you're in the process of digging with the boom, is having access to get off of the, the platform up there. And they have supplied these uh, foot pegs, one and two. However, if I was to complain about something, I'd say that they're pretty darn small. And at least they have some grippy uh, surface on them. But you know, I think if they are about twice as wide, they'd sure make it a lot easier to get your foot on without having your foot rock off the side. And then as far as the thumb is concerned, it's awesome. Actuated by this foot pedal here, you can see. And with low RPMs, of course, the thumb's going a little slower than usual, but that's actually pretty fast movement. Well, that's all for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope it was helpful, and you can all be thankful that we're not talking about a tractor that I tried to build. It wouldn't look anything like that. Tune in again next time for some more Wally in the Woods.